what I uh, want to do is, you know, here looking at this robot arm, it's, it's a standard articulated arm. It has two axes down here at the base, which we refer to as a shoulder, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, then we have the elbow up here and out here is the wrist, which has three axes. So there's a total of six axes in here. And I've created a program right now where the robot is just going to go back and forth over the top of itself. It's just going to do this lines back and forth and back and forth. And as this is happening, I want you to look at the rotation of the first joint down here. And I want you to see how it's just nicely oscillating back and forth and back and forth as these lines are being drawn. But as this evolves over time, what's going to happen is these lines are going to get closer and closer to the center of the robot. And I want you to, to sort of see if you're starting to notice any different. Do you see anything different right now? Yeah, it's not uh, the same. The oscillation is not happening the same. He, he, Exactly. So at, at first it was consistently this almost the same speed back and forth. And now it kind of starts out slowly and then it accelerates and then it slows down. So you see that kind of suddenly speeding up right when it gets to the middle, zip right on through. So you begin to see as, as you get closer and closer to that singularity, things get worse and worse and it gets faster and faster. And this is the real problem with the singularity is that we're not at the singularity yet. We're getting close to the singularity. You know, so we're kind of in that event horizon space right now where we see that going back and forth and back and forth. And, and, and I think you just saw that was like instantaneous, yes. like boom, right there. That was passing right through the singularity. And now we're, we've passed through it and we're going to the other side and we're seeing it starting to behave better and better. So as we get further and further away, it's going to start to get a little bit better as we go along. So that's where I wanted you to sort of see the behavior of what's going on. And if we want, we can even map some of this behavior to get an idea of what it's going to look like. And um, that's what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and, and actually run a quick simulation in the background of this that goes ahead and is going to create um, sort of a little map showing us where the singular areas are based on this particular program. Okay, so you can see that right there now. So this is kind of the same program in which it's color coded where everything is green. It means the motion is good. It has no problem where things start to change color here. You see this dark purple shape here. This is where a joint is going too fast. And then you see this more magenta color there. Yeah. That means you have an over torque situation. So it can't provide enough acceleration. So there's two things that can go wrong as you get into that event horizon. You either are trying to go faster than your joint can go or you're demanding more torque than the joint can deliver. Now, if you look at this shape, is that shape what you expected? Mm. What, what, I mean, we were talking about the singularity before in, in a black hole, you were, you were expecting almost a sphere. But if you look at this, um, you know, uh, looking at it this way, what does it look like? It's just like uh, infinity. Yeah, exactly. Isn't that great? <laughs> Isn't that ironic? It looks like infinity. Now, the reason why it looks like infinity is because we're doing our slices in the X direction. If we were to do this in the Y direction, basically this whole thing would rotate around and it would look more like an eight. And if you do it at 45, then it would be. A, so if you were to do it from every single direction, yeah, eventually you would make a circle out of it. But in any particular direction, the singularity actually looks like, if you want to say, you know, a pair of dumbbells or like, I like to say like an infinite infinity symbol is what it looks like. So that, that's, that is where you're, you're falling in. And, and this is where your robot is having a problem. So two things are either going to happen. It means the robot's going to attempt to go through and its motors are going to overspeed, which is not good for it. Or eventually it's going to be asked to deliver speed. It just can't. It's not even an overspeed situation. It's just an impossible situation. Or more than likely, the robot's going to have to slow down. And, and what's determining this is the limiting axis. It could be axis four, it could be axis three, it could be axis, in this case, it's probably either axis one or two. But one of those two is, is problematic, and it could shift. It could go from one to the other. It's just that one of them is having a problem, or maybe both of them. Uh, so, so this tells you when you're dealing with a singularity, it's a region that you've got to avoid. It's not just a spot, you, you know, there are some other areas you have to look at. And the thing about it is, is with um, the, the whole idea of the black hole is this thing called the, the, the Schwarzschild um, uh, radius. And 
that is where the event horizon occurs. And that radius is determined by the mass of the black hole. So the more mass of the black hole, the bigger the event horizon radius. And the same thing is going on here is that the size of this, if you want to, of event horizon is dependent upon the speed parameter. So because I'm making my robots go here at a um, thousand millimeters per second, that's the size. If I was to, to make it bigger, that would get even bigger. And if I was able to make it smaller. So velocity in the case, this case is like mass. If you want to use the analogy with a black hole and what that event horizon looks like. Okay. So there's now something else I want to do to, to make this more interactive, uh, and, uh, for us to be able to see. And that is I'm going to go ahead and, um, display what I call the velocity ramp. So we can see what's going on here and, and we'll try to do some cross sections. So it takes, uh, it takes a few seconds for it to go through this. It has to, to crunch a, a bit of numbers, but you'll begin to understand what these things are. And what you were seeing was actually a projection. So again, if you think about what's going on in a black hole, a black hole is disturbing space time, right? There's ripples in space time and everything else. The same thing is sort of happening here that we can begin to see is that, you know, over here, space is nice and planar and, and kind of nice. But as you get in here, things start getting warped. So you can see what the velocity profile looks like. And if you look right up front here, you'll see what looks to be a very nice, consistent velocity profile. Uh, now, do you remember looking at like a velocity versus time graph when you're in calculus where the y axis was like the velocity of something and the x axis was time? And you learned that the area underneath that profile was equal to what? A distance. Yeah, the distance. Exactly. So what's happening here is the area underneath this thing is, is basically the distance that the joints have to travel. And you see what ends up happening is, is out here in the hinterlands, it gets up and, and we maintain a constant velocity because we're not procrastinating. We, we, we have to go from maybe minus 90 degrees to 90 degrees and we just, you know, do it over the entire range of the movement. Whereas with the singularity, what ends up happening is, is you'll see there's this procrastination. You see this valley that's kind of in there. It's almost like it says, uh, I'm not going to worry about it. But then what ends up happening is you get this sharp peak because the area under this curve has to equal the distance traveled, right? So if it's not doing anything over here, then suddenly it has to make up for the fact that it's taking its, you know, its sweet time. And that's why there's like this one instant where the joints just flip. They just suddenly go from zero to 180, boom, because it's like, wow, I got to do it. And it has to do it in the instant. And that's the reason you go up and you see that really, really high speak, uh, uh, peak or, or profile kind of going on there. So um, this gives you an idea of what the singularity would look like if you actually plot the velocity um, as, you know, as, as, as some sort of distance on the movement that you have to give you an idea of where that looks. And just for the fun of it, I'm going to throw in the acceleration ramp also on top of this thing. And so we end up getting uh, two kinds of ramps. So the velocities, uh, we're really looking at this as a, as a percentage of the maximum speed, but the accelerations have to do a couple of things as well. And what the accelerations are constantly having to do is, is they're having to accelerate in one direction and then instantly switch down into another. So you see the acceleration sometimes is positive and sometimes it's negative. And what I want you to see here is this line here. That's that pole I'm talking about that goes right down to the center of this axis that we have right down here. So if, uh, if we look at this axis and I just need to go ahead and get my, uh, interacting axis on here. Uh, let's see, where's the interact? That's not the interact. Let me get the interact directly here. Sorry. Uh, so if, if we see where that rotates, you know, that's, that's the point where the pole comes out of right down there on, on the robot. And so this is where you want to avoid having your wrist go through. So it's when the center of the wrist starts to pass through here, that you would get the polar singularity. So that's what you want to avoid. And then the whole idea is that, well, um, if you point the first axis back, let's say at 45 degrees, that kind of delays where that's going to happen when, when that wrist is going to pass through it and you're going to have these problems. So that is the wrist singularity in a nutshell. Uh, and what some of these things here mean with the different colors for acceleration, the dark purple, is velocity and the magenta color here is the acceleration. 
So I hope that uh, was a little bit instructive and informative for you.